sad news come from our fellow neighbor country, Singapore. Singapore is now flagging the chance of a recession this year. The country has on Monday cut its 2020 growth and export forecast due to an expected economic blow from the new coronavirus outbreak. Indeed, coronavirus is a nightmare for every country. Other than China, Singapore is heavily impacted. Let's check how the progress of coronavirus has been going on so far in Singapore through the first graphic in today's infographic segment. This is um, Singapore cuts GDP forecast amidst COVID-19. Um, and this is the update um, situation. The number of quarantined citizens in Singapore as much as 1,160 people complete quarantine as much as 1,326 people in hospital as much as 52 people and recovered already as much as 29 people. This one is taken from Singapore's Minister of Health updated February 18, 2020. Singapore has so far confirmed 81 cases of the novel coronavirus with authorities earlier this month, raising the disease outbreak response system condition to orange level last week. Prime Minister Lee Shin Long warned that the ongoing COVID-19 outbreak will have a significant impact on the local economy for the next couple of quarters. And if we look uh, or if we take a look on uh, Singapore's economic right now, it had been staging a nascent recovery after recording its lowest growth rate in a decade in 2019 at 0.7% and before the virus spread to the city-state in late January. And to get the details, let's check the next graphic. This is a Singapore economic growth in 2020. The projection will be from minus 0.5% to 1.5% in 2018. As we know, the um, country's uh, economic growth reached 3.1% in 2019. It was decreased quite significant to the level of 0.7%. The revisions came as the city-state revised up slightly its 2019 fourth quarter growth figures. However, the outbreak of COVID-19 has affected many countries around the world and is likely to dampen the growth prospect of China and those impacted. In China, GDP growth in 2020 will likely come in lower than earlier projected. This is due to a pullback in household consumption as a result of lockdowns and travel restrictions implemented in several major Chinese cities to contain the spread of the novel coronavirus. There are some analytics that projects China economic growth in 2020. Let's check the data. This is China economic growth projection in 2020 after the coronavirus outbreak case uh, had been uh, happening so far. Bloomberg, SNP, EIU, Moody's predicted the China economic growth will be uh, corrected to the level of 5.08%. Uh, that is the prediction from Bloomberg, SNP, only 5%, EIU, 5.4%, and Moody's, 5.8%. Meantime, China's government predicted um, its economic growth will, re which, uh, will reach 6.1%. That is before the coronavirus outbreak case. And actually, China initially planned for growth of about 6.1% this year, though economists have already tempered hopes as the virus death toll continues to rise. In short, some analysts predict that the things will get worsen. Chinese bad economy can be belt tightening to Indonesia. Regarding the lion country, it is uh, true that Indonesia-Singapore relations are underpinned by strong economic cooperation. Singapore and Indonesia have accomplished much together in the last few years. Therefore, if Singapore economic growth experience decrease, it will give economical impact to Indonesia. What are those? Let's check the next um, data. This is the list of effects of um, you know, uh, Singapore's economic slowdown to Indonesia. The first one is, of course, slowing down of export performance. And then the second one is the decreasing investment. This one is taken from core Indonesia's data. The impact is quite heavy because until now, peering at the origin of the country investing in Indonesia, Singapore is still the champion. Let's see on how much Singapore has invested to Indonesia so far through the next graphic together with the other biggest investment countries.
Singapore holds as the country with the biggest investment value as much as 6.5 billion US dollar to Indonesia. After Sim Singapore, we got China as much as 4.04 uh, .04 billion US dollar, Japan 4.31 billion US dollar, and after that we got Hong Kong as much as 2.89 billion US dollar, and Netherlands 2.59 billion US dollar. Throughout 2019, China was the second biggest source after Singapore. Chinese investment boosted the number, with mainland China and Hong Kong being the top sources of FDI in Indonesia. Even better, China surpassed Japan in the position of two countries with the largest investment realization in Indonesia. Therefore, if Singapore and China's economy gets worse, it will bring negative impact to Indonesia. And the outlook for the Singapore economy has weakened since the last review. As the closest trading partner, we hope that Singapore can survive its economic turbulence and hide away from recession. Stay tuned on Market Alliance because we'll be right back after the break. Jadi Ponzi itu adalah yang diuntungkan yang pertama-tama karena okay. pertama kali uangnya bisa pulang tapi yang berikutnya lagi ini mungkin uangnya nggak bisa pulang. Mereka tuh lebih hebat dari perbankan untuk jualannya gitu loh. Industri pertambangan, saya saya melihat bahwa ya ini industri yang kalau dibilang unik ya. Resiko dan hasil itu tidak selalu sejalan. Kita sulit untuk mendapatkan ada Penambang-penambang muda yang baru dan uh, yang mau datang ke hutan untuk ketok batu lah. Istilahnya yeah. ketok batu menghasil, untuk mencari tahu apakah ada tambang di sana. Efisiensi itu sesuatu yang harus selalu diperhatikan ya. Hmm. Semua pengeluaran itu harus reasonable. Dukung terus operasi dan UMKM Indonesia. Saksikan terus IJX Channel, Your Trustworthy Economic Business and Capital Market Channel. Sektor pariwisata Indonesia terancam kehilangan 2 juta kunjungan wisman asal China. Itu pasti kan punya dampak ke industri pariwisata. Ya, oleh karena itu, satu, kita akan meningkatkan wisatawan nasional. Yang kedua, mengalihkan atau menambah frekuensi rute pesawat ke Indonesia dari negara lain selain China. Badan Pusat Statistik memprediksi optimisme dunia usaha pada kuartal pertama tahun ini kian merosot. We're on the last segment. Chairman of Indonesia Investment Coordinating Board reports Kalimantan governor to the president. The report is based on governor's act that bring difficulties on investment process. Chairman of Indonesia Investment Coordinating Board, Bahri Lahadalia, is infuriated with local officials who bring difficulties on investment process. Such action frequently become the main factor of slow investment realization. Bahlil claimed that he has established cooperation with the Relate Ministry to inform our local officials to support investment process. Saya berterima kasih juga kepada Pak Mendagri, karena Pak Mendagri sangat oh, terbuka sekali terkait dengan tindak lanjut dari Pak Ibrahim Tujuh dengan Pak Mendagri menyurati Gubernur Bupati Wali Kota untuk meminta agar seluruh izin yang ada pada, pada dinas Bupati Wali Kota dilimpahkan kepada DPMPTSP. Saya tahu bahwa masih ada satu gubernur yang tak mutasi, yaitu di Kalimantan, dan saya sudah lapor kepada Bapak Presiden. Saya bilang Bapak Presiden, kita harus tegakkan aturan. Negara ini masih negara kesatuan Republik Indonesia. Tidak boleh ada gubernur lain yang merasa juga seperti Presiden di negara ini. Tidak boleh. Begitu pun Bapak Bupati. Kita harus satu, imam kita satu. Negara ini negara yang berdaulat berdasarkan demokrasi, Presiden kita cuma satu. Namanya Insinyur Haji Joko Widodo. Bahlil added that he will no longer be tolerant to the investment obstacles which is consciously met by government officials, especially region or local officials. He will intensely coordinate with the Relate Ministry and also the President to guard the investment relaxation in Indonesia.
President Director of State-owned logistic company Budiwaseso showing this stock of rice entering Rabadan Holy Month pretty much sufficient. The hike of rice price in the market is affected by the high price of unhauled rice in farmers' level. Approaching Ramadan, Holy Month, the stock of rice is pretty much sufficient. Such condition is being delivered by President Director of State-owned logistic company Budi Waseso. Budi explained Bullock will absorb rice from farmers as much as 1.7 million tons by March and April this year. Budi also explained price hike of rice in the market is not caused by the rice scarcity, but it caused by the high price of unhauled rice in farmers level. Budi also said Bullock's stock of rice right now is reaching 1.8 million tons. Bullock will distribute 600,000 tons of rice through Prosperous Rice Program, so it will accelerate rice absorption approaching Ramadan. From Jakarta, Ricky Anwardi, ID Exchange. The impact of coronavirus outbreak started to be felt by trade ship sector. The issue decreasing the number of goods shipment using the ship and projected to affect the number of state income from the sector. Association of National Commerce Shipping Companies or INSA said there is a significant decrease of goods shipment. Such condition is affected by coronavirus outbreak sentiment. As is known, some countries implementing shipment limitation of some goods as an effort to minimize the impact of coronavirus outbreak. Chairperson of INSA, Carmelita Hartoto, said the decrease of goods shipment is such a huge blow for the industry and predicted to decrease larger amount of income for commerce shipping companies. Hartoto said to anticipate the current condition for commerce shipping companies have to find another countries that are not limiting goods shipping. Other than that, Ministry of Health is expected to provide detector device that will tell which products are imposed the coronavirus and which products that are not imposed by the virus. By that, the shipment that had been proven free from coronavirus can be reopened. From Jakarta, Ricky Anwardi, ID Exchange. Indonesia Central Statistic Agency stated that the impact of coronavirus epidemic to Indonesia's trade balance will be seen on February 2020 until the end of January. The agency sees a small contraction on Indonesia's trade balance with China. Based on data, Indonesia Central Statistic Agency stated that the impact of coronavirus epidemic to Indonesia's trade balance did not show any significant result. But Indonesia's export to China in January declined 211.9 million US dollar month on month. Not only export, the agency recorded that Indonesia's import from China decreased as much as 125.2 million US dollar, the biggest decrease on machine, goods, and mechanical equipment. Karena saya tidak menyajikan angka mingguan, jadi pengaruh itu belum akan terlihat signifikan di bulan Januari. Karena itu kita perlu lebih waspada dan mungkin nanti. Bagaimana efeknya bisa akan kita lihat pada rilis bulan berikutnya yang menyajikan pada bulan Februari. Economic slowdown that hits Singapore predicted to affect the amount of investment to Indonesia. On the other hand, coordinating Minister for Economy Erlangga Hartarto expects investment from another countries that used to be realized through Singapore will not be distracted. Corrections on Singapore economic growth predicted to affect the number of investment that used to be realized in Indonesia and at the end of the day will affect Indonesia economic growth. Such slowdown of Singapore economic growth is mostly affected by coronavirus outbreak. The number of Singapore economic growth corrected to only achieve a 0.5 to 1.5%. Coordinating Minister for Economic Affairs, Elanga Hartato, stated that Indonesia have to put its intentions on Singapore economic recessions. 
On the other hand, Erlangga expected investment from another countries that used to be realized through Singapore will not be distracted. Singapura kan menjadi bagian dari investasi dan banyak negara lain invest melalui Singapura. Jadi bukan sepenuhnya uh, dari negara tersebut. Jadi ada yang dari negara ketiga menggunakan basis hukum di sana. Erlangga added, government will evaluate the impact of coronavirus outbreak to investment in Indonesia. But the government still feeling optimistic about the investor's trust to Indonesia since government doing a lot of efforts in improving investment climate in Indonesia. Jakarta, Rahaju Pakmu for IDX Channel. Previously, labor unions firmly reject the controversial omnibus bill on job creation. However, from the business sector's perspective, this omnibus bill will bring huge benefit potential workforce and people who do not have permanent jobs. Business actors through the Indonesian Employers Association, or so-called APINDO, state that the omnibus bill draft that has been prepared by the government surely have positive impact on people who currently do not have permanent jobs and potential workforce. According to Head of Public Policy of APINDO, Sutrisno Iwantono, controversial omnibus bill on job creation is actually met by government with purpose to its people who currently do not have permanent jobs and potential workforce to get proper and steady jobs by creating more jobs. Lot omnibus law itu tujuannya bagus ya. Jadi karena pemerintah itu memikirkan kepentingan bangsa Indonesia. Ada 127 angkatan kerja ya di Indonesia yang perlu mendapatkan pekerjaan. Karena mereka ini adalah uh, orang-orang yang yang statusnya bisa uh, pengangguran terbuka itu sekitar 7 jutaan lebih. Ada juga yang setengah nganggur ya. Yang, yang menganggur tidak kentara, kelihatannya bekerja, tapi sebenarnya eh, tidak penuh, hanya 3 jam, 4 jam sehari. Ada juga angkatan kerja baru yang akan muncul. The government considers the bill on job creation to be essential as it has been struggling to attract foreign investment to help improve economic growth. If passed, the omnibus bill would amend about 1,200 articles in more than 80 prevailing laws including the labor law, which have been blamed for hampering investment in the country. From Jakarta, Ricky Anwardi, IDX Channel. And the news close our market headlines today. Please enjoy our next program on IDX Channel, your trustworthy economic business and capital market channel. I'm Wiki Adrian. Have a nice evening.